Hey everybody, it's me, Naja. For those of you that love the sound of my voice and like to look at my beautiful face, guess what? Today is one of those extra special versions where we're doing an audio and a video version of the podcast. So if you will, if you wanna take a second to pause this, if you're listening on iTunes or one of my other favorite streaming platforms, go over to YouTube, go over to my website and one of the links below and you can see us. You can see me and my amazing guest who I'm about to tell you all about right now. So welcome back to I Know I'm Crazy with Naja Hall. Today we're talking to the premier expert on jerks. Yep, you heard me right. So often on here, we chat about how to deal with the jerk in your life. But today, an actual scientist is helping us to truly understand that asshole. He's going to teach us the asshole's blueprint. He's gonna help us to break the jerk down into all of their minute pieces. And then we'll learn how to really safeguard ourselves from the wrath of the jerk. Stay tuned because right after this dance break, we'll be chatting with Dr. Jeremy Sherman. I know I'm crazy. I know I'm crazy. I know I know I'm crazy. I know I'm crazy. So Jeremy Sherman, PhD, is a science researcher and writer who's written a thousand blogs and articles for Psychology Today. I highly recommend, by the way, that you check check out the top 10 tips for dealing with know-it-alls and the trap of over-accommodating others. Hmm. Dr. Jeremy writes under the title of Ambigamy, a word that he made up, and it means insights for the deeply romantic and deeply skeptical. Sherman writes academically, but most of his writing is about everyday decision making. He's written a book now available as a free podcast called What's Up With Assholes? Oh, that makes my heart quiver. Science has been weirdly silent about total jerks or as they're more commonly identified assholes, a category that encompasses more than the diagnostic terms narcissist. We talk about that a lot here. Psychopath, we know a lot of those sociopath we co-parent with a lot of those or the triad dark personality you know that's an interesting thing dr jeremy because we mentioned when we think of these dark personalities we think some of the killers in our world history the stalins of the world the hitlers of the world the slave drivers of the world we think about some of those people but then they live right next door to us we work with them we co-parent with them we raise them we exist right alongside them and so i want to get into my first question is first and foremost why'd you choose to write the book what made you do that ah well uh i got interested in the question about 25 years ago what is a butthead since it can't just be whoever i happen to butt heads with <laughs> as we we all go around identifying people who are frustrating to us as assholes or buttheads or whatever yeah. Um, and, and I was, I, I got interested in a more objective definition of it because we have a lot of trouble in this world. Uh, that is, uh, uh, our exes, we might think that they're assholes and they might think that we're assholes. So what do we end up with? We end up with a lot of asshole on asshole battles. <laughs> so, I, so I got really interested in it. Um, and, and some of it was personal, almost too personal to talk about here in that I ended up uh, in the one relationship you can't divorce with uh, someone who had this tendency. That is, I raised someone who had this quality, and I, I'm trying to figure out whether uh, uh, whether they uh, were handicapped or indulgent. And it, it, as a father, you have to pay attention to that. If they're handicapped, you have to accommodate them. If yes. they're indulgent, you have to push them. And that's really why I got my PhD, is so I got really interested in these kinds of situations oh where it's, where you can't tell whether you're dealing with situation A or B and what you would do in the situations are exact opposite. You, you, you don't want to push the handicap. You do want to push the indulgent. You don't, yeah, you, you don't want to accommodate the indulgent and you do want to push them. So it's- You don't want to accommodate them, but you do want to push them. Also, while maintaining your, some sort of semblance of balance for yourself. Right. That which is like a whole nother podcast. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> Wow, I did not know that was, and like you said, it's too personal, so we're not, I'm not even going to go there. Um, it's amazing how our own experiences or adverse experiences will really lead us to become thought leaders in a specific realm. So I think it's really cool that you've done that. Well, thank you. Thank you. But I also have to tell you why I'm crazy, don't I? 
Well, that's going to be the next question. So, Dr. Jeremy, as you know, everybody that comes on, I know I'm crazy with Naja Hall, is a crazy person. You got to kind of be crazy to come here and listen and talk to me and listen like the rest of the crazy listeners. So, Dr. Jeremy, we need to know, why are you crazy? The, the list is long, but I'll start with <laughs> practicals. Um, I prefer stale Cheetos to regular Cheetos, and I have actually figured out a way to make us uh, to speed stale Cheetos. Oh, that is disgusting. I, I make I invent all sorts of weird foods. I've made chocolate curly fries. I've made ranch flavored whipped cream. The <laughs> other night I made barbecue taffy. You just take barbecue <sighs> sauce and you turn it into candy. It can make hard candy, it makes chewy candy. It's great. Chocolate okay. coated. So that, but that's the most, that's the most basic reason I'm crazy. I think that's enough. I think you probably okay. are now at the top of my list of responses that I've gotten. Cause you, Dr. Jeremy, you know what, everybody, let's give him a round of applause. He was too inducted into the crazy society. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Dr. Jeremy. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> so tell me this ambigamy because i googled the word i couldn't really find anything about no, it everywhere on the internet it had your name attached to it so what does ambigamy mean and then where this word come from and am i saying it right yeah you're saying it right um i made it up um i even came up with a limerick for it <laughs> um which is about relationships Okay. So now most of my writing isn't about relationship. When I want to get a, a bunch of hits up on an article, when I'm a, I'm a hit starved, uh, right. I'll write an article about relationships. Because um, everybody wants to. That's how you get that search engine. To that's kinda, right. Kinda Including, kinda I, I got to say that on Psychology Today, the most popular articles is how can I justify uh, this, uh, diagnosing my ex as a narcissist. <gasps> that's the most popular article there. So I, I've written about that. I've also written about... Um, uh, how to diagnose a narcissism di diagnoser. So a, a narcissist diagnoser is someone who goes around and anybody who doesn't care about them, everybody call a an narcissist. Oh, yeah. you know, you're going to have to tell us about that one next. So, okay. so but, ambigamy. but ambigamy, here's the limerick. In this pairing, I find that I'm fearing about when we'll start breaking and tearing. Oh, don't you dear leave me too soon. It would grieve me or too late if you start to get wearing. So this is about how I, I want, I don't want to, I don't want to be dumped, but I also don't want to be stuck in something that I don't want to be in. Um, so there's, there's a tension built right into a relationship. And why is that? Because actually a partnership is six relationships at once. It's I love you. You love me. I love me. You love you. I love us. You love us. That's a whole lot to juggle. Damn, that's a lot. So it's a, even the simplest relationships got that going on. So, so I came up with the term years ago. It's, it's related to a term I just came up with, uh, which is vice versatility. That is okay. the ability to flip things over, to see the vice versas of things. Mm -hmm. And if anything makes me crazy, it's not the stale Cheetos. Um, <laughs> I've, I've, I've been a, I've been a promoter of them. I've been a, a, a missionary for stale Cheetos and okay. I have, and I've gotten many people to like them too, which may mean that they're crazy or it may I, mean, yeah, I don't know about that. No, well, they're like, more like beef jerky that way, but really what oh, makes me crazy oh. is my vice versa. Tility. Vice that versatility. Is, yeah. That, yeah. That I, that I can look at things from opposite sides. Um, for example, when I ask the question, what is a butthead since it can't just be whoever I butt heads with, mm -hmm. I'm basically looking at it from the other person's perspective and saying, yeah, they think I'm an asshole too. Mm -hmm. So I have to get, so we have to get clearer on what an asshole is, especially because we are not going to survive individually or as a culture if we don't get better at spotting and stopping the assholes. Oh my God. Or having kids with them or no, electing them or that's supporting right. them or exactly. listening to them. Yeah, or, that's right. right. Yeah. yeah. That seems like such a complex thing though, is what is the asshole? Cause then aren't you kind of forced to call out your own assholiness? Oh, totally. No, no, no. So that's, that's the other thing about my work. I, one of the first things I came up with in this line of work 25 years ago was I wouldn't put it past me. That is, what, <laughs> yes. Nothing, nothing human is foreign to me. Whatever, whatever I laugh at at others on others, I'll end up wearing within the year. Mm. Um, I, uh, another mantra from that same time was uh, um, no matter how hard I chase the truth, it will never catch me. Wow. So you seem like you have an immense amount of self-awareness. 
No, I wouldn't. So this is the thing. I never get to call myself an expert. I do not get to speak with any authority about what I am. I cannot, you know, the whole business where someone says, don't tell me how you feel. Don't tell me how I feel. Yeah. I don't, I don't allow myself to say that. Okay. I, I, I am not the authority on myself. I'm really intimate with myself. So I really am up in there close and personal, which makes me both more aware of what's going on with me and less aware. Because the last thing I want to do is discover disappointing things about me. So I'm not an expert. I'm a specialist. So what's wrong with discovering a person's own shortcomings or the things that are intrinsically wrong with us? What, so that what you is fix them? wrong? What is wrong for me to discover in me something disappointing or shortcoming? Um, I can obviously tell you all the reasons why it's great to do that and while the truth will set you free. But I can also tell you that if someone came over to my house and told me a carpenter came over to my house and said, I had a two thousand, a twenty thousand dollar foundation job I had to do on my house because it's cracked down there and it's falling apart. That would be bad news. I wouldn't look forward to that. I don't want to find out I have a whole other expensive thing on my to do list. Uh huh. Uh, you know, I, I think I'm cruising along and then someone tells me, oh, actually, you got this thing you got to work on. So that's a good reason why people are quite averse to hearing about their uh, their their lesser qualities. Yeah. Um, and and that's why I have to keep in mind. I wouldn't put it past me. What other people do, I do, too. I'm so a you're human. Saying, so you're saying I know that I'm pretty much capable of everything else that I accuse and sometimes maybe even admonish the next guy for. Oh, totally. And so I mean, that, that's raises, true. that raises a big question. And this is this is actually common knowledge in social psychology. We all lie. We're all hip. We all engage in hypocrisy. Yes. Um, we all are selfish to one degree or another. So then the question becomes, if everybody lies, what makes a liar? If everyone in, is engages in some hypocrisy, what makes someone a hypocrite? If someone that does it more than others, right? Yeah, but more is not enough because then it's a question of degree. And I actually think there's an answer to this. So I had to deal with this. Everybody engage, everybody does some assholey things. Absolutely. So what makes an asshole? And I think the answer comes from the original quote, which get, doesn't get quoted much. Uh, uh, power tends to corrupt. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. So we, we say power corrupts. Uh, absolute power corrupts absolutely. That's not the original quote. The original quote was ab power tends to corrupt. Lying tends to corrupt. It doesn't always corrupt. We have to lie to get through our days. We have to lie to be nice to people. We lie a thousand different ways mm -hmm. in order to be civilized. We, we tell li white lies. We are tactful. We're diplomatic. We don't say everything we're feeling. We don't, you know, there are a lot of situations where lying is just what the doctor ordered. Mm. And to claim that you never lie or that that lying is always wrong is actually a lie. I mean, we now know everybody <laughs> does it. You're so, like you're lying about not lying. <laughs> that's right. So it's a, what we call a meta lie. It's a lie about lies. So so but absolute lying, absolute hypocrisy is wall to wall. That is, there's no situation you won't handle by bullshit. That mm -hmm. is, you'll say whatever you'll do, whatever so as long so so as to never discover the cracks in your foundation that is once you become permanently sealed off from any kind of discouraging news that's when you become a total shithead that's when you become an asshole that's when you become an ignoranus <laughs> which, is, which is and then some of those people do have large platforms or they do have a lot of influence oh yeah no over, they got over yeah. countries over God forbid, young, fertile minds, you know, their children. Oh, totally. That's right. <gasps> and when you think about why, one way to read all of the history of civilization is that I used to have, uh, I used to live alone in this nice big room. And then it started, I ended up getting a bunch of roommates um, and they were talking like at a bar where everybody's talking loud to, to, uh, to because they can't hear because everyone's talking too loud. Right. So who in that room is going to end up being heard most? The loudest, the loudest, most, loudest, most obnoxious person, that's right. who you're going to hear. Right. And people will, if you're going to hear them, you'll end up listening to them. And pretty soon, because they are succeeding in being the loudest in the room, you'll start talking like them because you're a wannabe, you know, you're, <sighs> you want to be just like them. And pretty soon you end up with a whole cult of assholes. Oh. Does your partner share kids with a loony? Are your stepkids driving you up a wall? 
Is your partner failing miserably at setting boundaries? Well, VIP Stepmom is where you need to be. We're an exclusive private community just for stepmoms, and we'd love for you to join our tribe. Each month, our members enjoy private conversations, podcasts, expert workshops, a subscription to Stepmom Magazine, and monthly live Zoom meetings. If you're ready to join a diverse community that is committed to making sure you live your best life, visit VIP Stepmom today. We'll save a seat for you. VIP, 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 Stepmoms, that's you and me. So I want to go back because I had, I put a pin in something that you said. One of the articles okay. that you wrote about the people that are always, what, how did you say the people that are always calling other people narcissists? I forget how you said it, but I want to oh, talk about uh, uh, narcissist to diagnosis. How to, yes. di how to diagnose a narcissist <laughs> diagnosis. <How> <laughs> So then how do you, and I think it probably sounds pretty obvious because I know somebody, Dr. Jeremy, that everybody that it doesn't work out with that he dates, she's a narcissist. And that's right, I, said, that's Dude, right. I, I said, if you keep running into the, and he, this person is not a therapist. So honey, they ain't got a license to diagnose a piece of bubble gum, but you know, every single woman, Oh, I saw narcissistic tendencies in her. And so I think that might be an example of a person that you're talking about that does that. Right. Yeah, and it would come naturally to any of us because we all, nobody wants to be thwarted. You're you're walking along and you stub your toe and you're pissed at whatever stubbed your toe. It was a wall. You walked into it. Not, <laughs> it the wall's fault. The um, wall was there. <laughs> yeah, so, so that would be a natural tendency in us. The world should be supporting us. The world should be our ally. We're heroic. Uh, we're on the side of good. Anything that gets in our way is attacking goodness itself. You can do this with any, you know, you just pick any, any positive word and say, I'm a patriot. And anybody who doesn't agree with me is a traitor mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever you want to say. If you're on the left, uh, I'm mindful. And anybody who doesn't agree with me is unmindful. Right. Or if you're, you know, what you can do is I, I'm, I'm a Christian. And anybody who doesn't agree with me is, a, is, a, is, is a, bound I'm to Satan. burn in hell. That's right. All of that stuff. So anybody <laughs> will, that's available to all of us. And it's a cheap and easy trick for keeping your head up high. And I need to keep my head up high without pulling that trick. So, so a narcissist this person that's feeling rejected, um, the narcissist yeah. diagnoser. Yeah. It's just, How do and, we and deal all, with them though? Because we all know these people, Dr. Jeremy. How? I know them in me. I, it's in me too. Remember, I, nothing human is foreign to me. So mm, I don't get okay, to say I, like I know them as if I'm the the what we call in philosophy, the view from nowhere, like I'm neutral and unbiased. Yeah. No, I, I have to say everything human is in me too. Okay. I came with the whole kit. And so the trick for me is to, is, is, is to do it, to do it right. Mm -hmm. So here's how I do it right. I'm into what I call optimal illusion. I will play, I will play the badass. I will play, you know, the son of God. I'll do any of that in fiction. I do it offline. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's actually a bit like masturbation. That is, I'll self-pleasure with self-flattery, but I don't do it in public. And when I'm done, I zip up my pants and get back to work, <laughs> get back to reality. So I have no problem with people doing it offline. Go offline, go to, you know, go to church, go play a video game, do anything where you end up feeling like you're among the, like you're like a god. Yeah. And then get back to reality where you're not. And I think that actually is is we we don't give entertainment enough credit for this we all you can get wisdom from entertainment there's edutainment there's you can get wisdom from any other but we also need these pit stops where we just we just regenerate our mojo to get yes. through the day you have to go off and fake it for a while and yeah. we're perfectly good at doing it in fiction when i'm watching a, a, a summer blockbuster i feel like the handsome hero <laughs> I totally feel like I'm that guy and I deserve the woman and I am going to prevail in the end. I got this whole romantic notion. If you tap me on the, on the shoulder, I'd say, no, of course it's not real. I know it's yeah. not real, but I, but I, that doesn't mean I don't milk it for my mojo. I need that kind of mojo boost. Mm -hmm. So, so I think we all need those ego boosts, but I think we got to be careful where we do them because some people right. want to turn the whole culture into their vanity project. They want to turn statecraft. They want to turn government into their vanity project. That ain't what it's for. Right, it, right. It, so. I see. I see. Okay. Oh, so I'm, I'm, I guess I'm kind of grasping what you're saying is if I'm looking at it from the lens of Dr. Jeremy, 
I am no better than the next guy because the things that I'm accusing the next guy of, I am not only capable of, I've also done as well. No, right? I, I, almost close. <laughs> okay. Um, questions of degree matter a whole lot. So um, while I am capable of the same things as other people, um, the that doesn't mean we're all equal. So when I, since in this work in psychoproctology, trying to understand assholes, mm -hmm. um, there are two common answers people give me why I shouldn't study it. No one's an asshole. Be, don't be don't be mean. Don't be name caller. Which by the way is name calling. To call someone <laughs> a name caller is name calling. Don't be name calling. As is saying that someone's a beautiful woman. That's actually name calling too. But right. they, but anyway, don't be a name caller. There are no assholes in the other world in the world. And the other approach is to say everyone's an asshole. Since we all do the same stuff, then there's then we're all the same. No, yeah. the questions of degree matter. So for example, I just said, yeah, no, I play God, but I do it in private. I don't do it in public. I gotta face reality. Right. I'll go to some concert and feel like a badass for singing along with lyrics I don't understand, but they make me feel like a badass. But afterwards, um, I'll I'll go to my car and get back to reality. No, but the difference between uh, going to a concert and feeling like a badass and going to a political rally mm -hmm. is that the political rally afterwards, people go out to their cars and they get, they get in their cars and they think they have just found uh, something more real than reality. Yeah, be, and I guess going be, to a concert. So we can say, oh, a concert is entertainment. I know that I'm not a gangster rapper. Well, I... Yeah, 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 yeah. I am no, a gangster right. rapper. Everybody, everybody knows that. Yeah. But I know I'm not a gangster rapper. I'm not gonna go and shoot the yeah, club. No, it's, but going right. to events, even you know, I think I hate to compare a political rally to a religious event. No, but you very know, similar. You know, very but similar. some people are just so emboldened to the point to where they position themselves next to figures such as Christ um, and yeah, these right. other untouchables in our history. So. I see what you mean. Yeah. And it, yeah. So and they basically the rallies are saying you like the buzz you're getting off of this. You can you can amp up the buzz if you yeah. pretend it's more real than reality. If you claim that it's more real than reality. It's like mm. going to it's like going to see a, a summer blockbuster and the usher comes out at the end if just at the end and says, if you want to see the sequel, you got to go out and tell the world that Iron Man is more yes. real than reality and that yes. you are aligned with Iron Man so that if anybody attacks you, they're attacking Iron Man and and yes. you know, you'll get a real That's buzz amazing. out of that. I mean, I've left some movies feeling like I was the character for like 20 minutes afterwards. It's yeah, just, that's right. Like after I saw Mal after I left this movie theater from seeing Malcolm X when Denzel played, yeah, yeah. I literally felt like I was a Black Panther and I was going to go take over Harlem, which is my community, which is where I live now. And, you know, so those feelings, there are some of us that say, OK, let me snap back out of it and introduce myself to the real world because I got to go to work tomorrow. But there, I guess, Dr. Jeremy, what you're saying is there are some systems and some minds that are more penetrable to being um, penetrated. Yeah. yeah, for all sorts of reasons. One would be that you've been education deprived because education is largely about trying to get over yourself a little bit and see the world from different perspectives. Yes. It's actually about vice versatility in a way. Vice versatility. Um, but also, if you are an anxious person by nature, or if your situation is really rough, if your situation is really rough, mm -hmm. I mean, for example, just yesterday, I was watching a documentary about how um, Christianity took over in slave culture and boy oh boy i mean i'm i'm not a fan uh, huh, of tell that, me about it of that move um no but so the hungry are soon eaten if you are really desperate for some affirmation you'll take it from anywhere and that does relate to marrying the wrong guy or the mm. wrong woman that is yes. if you're hungry and you're out there you know, it's like you got your handles right there and anyone can grab it and move you any way they want. Yeah. Um, because because we want what I'll call endorphment. Another word I made up. The, it, it's the endorphin rush of being endorsed. I feel good because I'm being validated and understood. And That's I right. feel amazing. I feel powerful. That's right. That's right. You get a rush. An endorphin is actually morphine. Yeah. That is, we're all on morphine. Yeah. All that that's the body has natural chemical painkillers. So the pain killing effect of being endorsed is enough to get people in relationships 
with yes. organizations or people that turn out really nasty for them. Mm. So let's talk about the jerks in all of our lives, the collective jerks in all of every single person's life. Um, you speak a lot about jerkology. And when I hear the word ology, that means the study of, or he's going to yeah, teach me right. something right. or oh, I'm about to learn something. So I'm going to ask you some just really simple questions. Yeah. And I don't mean to oversimplify it, um, but we all, once we recognize that jerk in our life, whomever that person is for the purposes of uh, this podcast, let's just say it's a, it's an ex-wife or an ex-husband. Let's just say that. Let's just say <laughs> let's at just, random. For, for, for heck's sake, let's just say that. Once you recognize this person is committed to being a jerk in your life, what's the best course of action, Dr. Jeremy? What the hell are you supposed to do? Well, uh, there's two things, two main things, I'd say. Um, and you have to be careful where you do these things, because it, uh, anybody who's an asshole or a narcissist, if you confront them, they will escalate because Ooh. there's nothing. They, there's no limit to how far they'll go. They will say or do anything to feel mm -hmm. like saints. They're they're on a they're on a holy war. Holy war is an interesting word because it holy means it's the purest, uh, most pious uh, uh, possible place. And war is just dirty. So what does it mm. mean to call holy war? They're they're holy warriors, meaning that they they get outraged at others, which makes them feel pure, which makes it feel like their duty to get outraged at others, which makes them feel purer still. And you can really rev out on that drug. So that's mm -hmm. who you're dealing with. And it's dangerous. Um, because, I mean, many psychiatrists will actually say, do not confront narcissists because they will escalate and it gets really dangerous. On the other hand, I think you have to mess with them if you can afford to. So I'm just saying be careful. You, you have to mess with them. So that sounds like agitation. That sounds like agitation. And I thought we've all been taught, don't agitate those people because they have the visceral that we just simply don't. What, what does no. mess with them mean? So messing with them, I have two ways, two main ways of messing with them. First of all is you do not take them on about anything, any topic they bring up. That is, they will pull out their butts, anything they can wrap around you and tangle you up in. So if they say, hey, our child said that they hate coming over to your house yeah, because yeah, no. like, they hate their hate being there. So if they yeah. say something like that, they yeah. call you up out yeah. of the blue. So the natural reaction from conscientious people is to defend themselves and say, that's not true and all of that. That is, they're not playing that game. They're playing okay. a different game. The Damn. game they're playing is, the power of being able to lead you around by the nose to any topic they want. They're after what I call frame dominance. Okay. And they'll change the subject all the time. They won't answer your questions and they will change the subject all the time. And as long as you are conscientious, they'll get away with it because you'll keep on trying to be defensive in response to them, which okay. is you will so they're say- they're calling you saying, yeah, our kid hates being over your house because it's nasty and it smells and you never feed them. And then you say what? You say, with you, all I ever get, you'll say or do anything to feel heroic. And the mm -hmm. fun so thing about this- So you just say it, call it what it is then. That's right. That is, you will, you, no deed too dirty for a saint like you. You think you can say anything and do, you know, do anything you want just so, because you can't stand the thought that you ever have any flaws. And what they will do in response- They start to defend themselves because they're one trick phonies. They only have that. That's the only game they have left. So, so you've kind of flipped it up on its belly. They were calling you so you could be defensive, but now you're like, well. But you're not, but you're ignoring all their topics and you're just saying, and it's best done with an audience because mm -hmm. you're really playing to an audience. I, when I'm dealing with assholes, I will almost never talk directly to them. Mm -hmm. I will say, see what he did? You see what he just did? He did it again. Yeah. And you stick with it with relentlessly like a, yeah. you, you dog it about it you stick with it and you say see he did it again mm. they're one trick phonies that's all they've got when you asshole is the last refuge of an asshole they've given up on all the other techniques they don't need them they have this one trick and if you point out that this is what they got this is the one thing they've got you don't get into moral debates with them right you don't uh, give them any credibility for being moral guides yeah you're just saying basically you don't take advice or critiques from from people. someone yeah yeah that's that's right it, yeah drop the whole thing about me thinking yeah. what i think about the politics i'm just saying 
that if you think if you've done a careful job of diagnosing an asshole, mm -hmm. um, if all you've ever seen them do is say or do whatever to to feel heroic in the moment, moment to moment, and they'll change their mind, what, whatever, they'll just pull out their butts, whatever moral moral reason. Then once you've decided that, then you expose that and know you do not take any moral guidance from them and you let them know indifferently like no nah, i'm not really i'm i, I you know i keep my own counsel i now, go to wait a minute dr jeremy with, yeah, wait yeah. just a doggone minute here yes because at this point we're flipping them on their hairy underbelly we are exposing them in front of other people we are humiliating yeah. them yes i think what happens next is you start to feel their wrath in different ways oh, totally, totally. Right? so then how do we because none of us want to deal with their crap so how do we effectively expose them but cut ourselves off from the retaliation well, no, 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 that so, is so, inevitably so, coming yeah so this is why i said you got to be careful where you do this you could get in a whole lot of trouble doing this for a boss or for a violent uh ex or yeah. for someone who you're going to have to tangle with for a long time most of my experience i, I mean I, I described a little bit of the personal experience which you don't get out of but most of uh most of my experience is with trolls and trolls you can cut off <laughs> and and my goal with trolls is to disappoint them and frustrate yeah. them enough that they leave and they call me a loser as they leave, but I don't care. I, yeah. I, I trapped, I tripped them up in their own game. The other day I said to one of them, um, uh, I think you're just upset because um, I'm beating you at your best game. Um, you know, and, and he just, but see, we're, we're talking in terms of, because you know, I, I learned a long time ago, I don't have five minutes to waste with arguing with a keyboard warrior. I will say, baby, show me where you are. Let's meet up. But that's the Memphis, Tennessee in me. I don't do that too much anymore. Right. But, right. you know, what about these people who we have the misfortune of coexisting with for the rest of our days? We can't just block well, them. No, no, it's true. It's true. And it's, so there is a famous saying often attributed to the playwright George Bernard Shaw, though he didn't say it. Never fight with a pig. You'll just get dirty and the pig likes it. So mm. that's a great saying, but my point is sometimes you've got to fight. Sometimes you got to fight, Dr. Jeremy. And I tell you guys this, all, don't I all the time? That's because those turn the other cheek and be the bigger person. And when they go low, we go high days. Look where that got us all. Yeah. Look where no, that it, got the rest no, of us. No, so I, I agree with you. Can't do there. it. No. Yeah. And besides, they'll go low or high. They'll go anywhere. Oh, my God. So, that, so, so this is the thing about uh, assholes, too, is that they play prude. They'll 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 shame you for not living up to morals, and then they'll laugh at you for caring about morals. They'll do anything. They'll play prude or punk. They'll be they'll be the adult in the the talking down to the child, or they'll be the petulant little brat who's talking about how they don't have to follow the rules. They'll do so anything whatever, to feel heroic in the moment. That's a and very desperate, pathetic place to to exist. It's also in. an easy place to land if you are, it's uh, what I'm saying is it's not a big choice they make, it's a habit you can fall into. Humans humans would fall into this habit. It's the same thing as a toe stubbing. You, you do that enough. If you get away with it, it's the easiest thing to become. And you can do it with no cause at all, or you can do it in the name of any cause in the world, any Ooh, cause. You can, any you can side be, of uh, the coin. Uh, so, it, that doesn't matter. That's just window dressing. It's I got nothing to do with it. It's just this feeling of heroism, right? That makes people so. So I want to get to one the second technique. Yes, yes. So with this guy who I tripped up online the other day, I said to him, and I know how you're going to respond to what I just said. I I cut him hard, right, in front of an audience of people who knew me and who him, and I said, I know what you're going to do next. You're going to come back with snarky, uh, sneering at me. Now, I knew he wasn't. I, what he came back with was, well, if I've ever been snarky or sneering to you, I apologize. Oh, so now he's being condescending and trying to patronize you yeah, th as if I, you're the bad guy. Yeah. Then I said, then allow me to continue my snarking, sneering attack on you because I think you deserve it. See, here's the thing. We are living in a culture that believes in what I'll call virtue maximizing. You mm -hmm. take a word like going high or loving or kindness or mindful. And you assume that the way the world works is that the object of the game is to maximize that thing. Yeah. You could never have too much love. You could never have too little hate. You should eliminate all hate and maximize all love. That's not how anybody lives, not how anybody could live, not how anyone should live. 
Love is not the answer. It's the question. What mm. to love, what not to love. So we go around shaming each other by saying, you're doing the thing that we should never have any of. Right, you know, right. You're being stubborn. Well, stubborn is just another word for dedicated. Yeah. The question is yeah. when to be dedicated and when not to. If we don't and like it, And then who defines talk, it? Who gets to define the difference in another individual, right? Yeah. So the thing I'm paying attention to is the people who act like it, they don't have to define it. They're just they're just describing it accurately. And they they'll go around saying, so never, never be narcissistic. No, that's not. You know, so if someone says, here's an example. So someone says you're arrogant or someone says you're too arrogant. It's uh -huh. interesting. They mean the same thing by it. Mm -hmm. So for me in my life, given my vice versatility, my peace of mind comes from worrying equally about whether I'm too assertive, too arrogant or not arrogant enough for the situation. So what's a good response to that then, Dr. Jeremy? If somebody says you're too arrogant or you're arrogant, what do you respond? If someone says I'm arrogant, it's, uh, uh, well, n notice that that one is another example of a gum baby. In yeah, because you, now you feel like you got to defend yourself yeah. to this so, person. So, I, so this is where I, I think you have to be, you have to be very grounded in the fact that you have all these traits that others have and that you're trying to get the right mix of them. Mm -hmm. So mm. I say, so, so they can say uh, you're too arrogant for me. Uh, I, 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 so, so basically what I'll say is, yeah, no, I, I wonder whether I'm too arrogant or not arrogant enough for every situation. I'm trying to figure out when to assert myself, when to mm -hmm. not assert myself. That's different from you. You go around pretending you got no arrogance. There's nothing more arrogant in the world than claiming to be the supreme authority about who's arrogant. They I like at, that response. So if you're look in the at text, you, look at you, you think I like that response, Dr. Jeremy, because if you like are a person that's on talking parent or you're having to defend yourself on email, like a lot of us do, because we don't um, engage. Yeah, that's a, that's a great response when they make this accusation and they're trying to get you to respond. If you feel like exerting the energy and giving them a response, I like that because you're not defending yourself. You're basically turning it around on them so a lot of us that's just right i'm actually trying to, i'm actually trying to shame them for using what i'll call virtue maximizing that is pretending no one should be arrogant and therefore because they embrace that concept in in theory yeah. they are free from arrogance and that they're now they're the authority on arrogance what i call um exempt by contempt because i hate arrogance I must be an expert on arrogance and uh, and and I don't see any arrogance in me. Therefore, I must be exempt so from you arrogance. Can say, so a good response is I think it's amazing how you can point out you're such an expert at pointing out arrogance in other people, but you fail every moment of every single day to see it in yourself. No, I would not go that I would not go that way because that's that borderlines on I know you are, but what am I? And they can say that back. I'm actually okay. suggesting something slightly different. Okay, okay. Help help us to kind of which is basically um damn straight I'm arrogant sometimes mm -hmm. and not and and humble sometimes. I'm trying to figure out when to be arrogant and when to be not uh when to be humble. Whereas you pretend that you don't have any of those questions, that you're of the authority on arrogance and so basically what I'm pointing to here is mm -hmm. once again, vice versatility. Mm -hmm. We are all riding these winding roads in life. Mm -hmm. um, and the roads, are, it, we're trying to guess when to turn our wheel to the left, when to turn our wheel to the right, when to be more loving, when to be less loving, yeah. when to actually hate. That is, there are places to hate. If you, if you love justice, you hate injustice and you shouldn't yeah. mince words about it. Right. Um, and, and so you're trying to figure out how to steer your wheel for the curves you're dealing with in the road. Mm -hmm. And for someone to go around talking like you should never, ever be arrogant. Um, no, you should never be too arrogant for the situation, but never right. be arrogant. That's like a backseat driver who's saying the way to ride these winding roads is to turn your wheel all the way to one side and leave it there. That's crazy. Right. And I don't mean good crazy like stale Cheetos. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's shit for brains. That's no way to drive the winding <laughs> roads of life. I'm talking yeah. about this. You got to be navigating. So like I say, my confidence comes from worrying roughly equally if I'm too arrogant for the situation mm -hmm. or not arrogant enough for the situation. And then developing these. I like how you have 
managed to develop this um, quantifiable, quantifiable response that'll kind of shut it down. Because I believe in shutting down a troll, shutting down a hater. Um, yeah. But as you said, there's sometimes. So then, last last question. There are some that we just can't get away from. Be it our children, yeah, that's our right. maybe a parent, you know, just a, a, a spouse, a, a on a job situation. Yeah. And people on the internet, everybody throws the B word around like it's nothing. Boundaries. Oh, set boundaries, set boundaries. But sometimes, Dr. Jeremy, if we're living in real life, you literally do have to intersect with some of these assholes and these jerks. And yeah, so, so you set the boundaries, but they're busy. Uh, they want to tear down your boundaries. As oh, fast God. As they, they like eat boundaries like cupcakes, y'all. Yeah. So then how do you yourself personally set those boundaries in situations where you don't have a choice but to have to engage? Ah, well, okay, so this is the weird thing about my life. I don't have that problem anymore. Okay. Um, so when I was young and hungry, I was eaten. That is, I ended up with obligations to things that weren't particularly good for growing me in the directions I want to grow. Okay. Now all obligations, all commitments are mixed bags and, um, uh yeah um, uh, so so i'm not in a great place to to to, to speak to this i okay. can only sp but no just because i have to say i am currently living a life i'm 65 now and uh, what i say is i'm glad that my lack of appetite for relationship finally caught up with my lack of aptitude for it Ooh, I'm not lack of, Oh, I like that. I mean, at some point you just kind of grow out of it. I had a great run. I had an amazing re relationship. I had a 16 and a half year marriage, three kids out of it. Um, no, I, I, uh, I was, uh, I, I, I dated a, a professional model who was making 20,000 a, uh, a, a weekend. Ooh. I mean, my buddy said, wow, a blind model. How'd you get so lucky? <laughs> <laughs> No, I dated. Well, friends I, like those. We all no, need those I had, types of I had, friends. I had a great run, but I, <laughs> but the problem is that I've decided that I want my, I want my freedom to think and write what I want, and yes. I write about a lot of personal stuff that is touchy to have in relationships. So I'm glad yeah. at this point I'm, I'm down to friends, and I mean friends without benefits because benefits tend to confuse the friendships. They do and my add responsibility. Are, they those benefits. They come with some responsibilities. Yeah, you, yeah, you, 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 you kiss someone, and suddenly there's all sorts of entailments. It, it includes all sorts of stuff. So I'm glad that by my age, I I'm I'm over it. I I have buddies who are in their 70s and 80s who can't get over it. They're still trying to get endorsement. They're still trying to get the bling of of yeah. being affirmed. Uh, man, I don't want to be. In You're that free position. from that. That's like another level of transcendence, though. Just being free from it. But I, I'm you know what I want way. you to. I want you to teach next, whenever you get started, I want you to teach how to exist in both lanes. Cause I know you're like, oh, I'm free from that. But then there's some people that can never escape, but there's no, gotta I, be a way to kind of meander comfortably in the middle of needing I, and not I needing. I wouldn't say comfortable, but I would say- well, I want can, a comfort, comfort. You know, yeah, I know, comfort. That's, that's the goal. But what yes. I'm kind of saying is how do you manage to minimize the, the stress and anxiety and difficulty of that? Yeah. Um, that's what, that's part, what I'm asking you, part Dr. Of the Jeremy, solution, I don't know. I think is, is you find a way to vent it offline. I do a lot of VR exercise these days. It's uh, Virtual and that's reality, a great, right? That's VR. Yeah, virtual reality. It's gotten really cheap, $300 for a headset, and you get to blow up monsters um, uh, in your spare time, and it's, and it's completely immersive. That is, you totally feel like you're in it because everywhere you look and everything you hear is all within that context. It's not like watching that, that, TV. That sounds really therapeutic, too. No, that's what I'm talking about. You find yeah. a place where you can be a badass god or goddess offline. And you're not hurting vent. other people. You're not blowing up real people outside. You're no, just, not at all. That's right. That's right. But you're still that's getting right. the, the endorphins. You're getting the mental fix. Yeah, right? you're getting the, Yeah, that's what you got to do that. It, human life is fundamentally stressful. It's yes. crazy to be a human. Compare what we could worry about before going to bed to what a dog could worry about before going to bed. We are, our lives are just. It's intense. really complex. We've really made this thing. I don't know. I think we made it harder than it has to be personally, but it's, it's, it's tough existing. So Dr. Jeremy, I could literally talk to you all day, but we don't have all day, but can you tell everybody where to find you and where to pick up your book? Okay, so you can get uh, you can find way too much of me just by Googling Jeremy Sherman because I got these thousand articles. I've got videos on origins of life. I've got videos about assholes. I've got um, three podcasts, including one called Negotiate With Yourself and Win, in which I just debate myself 
So I'm just arguing with myself the whole time. Um, and all this stuff is is free. Um, I, I, one of the things that's lucky about me is I don't have to make money off of this. I'm doing okay. Um, and uh, that includes this new book, What's Up With Assholes. I really recommend it for anybody who's dealing with someone like that. And it's available as a, as a I basically read the whole book for free as a pod class called What's Up With Assholes. It's available everywhere. Um, if you're dealing with one, I mean, man, there are a lot of people dealing with assholes and I hear from a lot of them. Uh, you know, I've had articles that get a half a million hits on, uh, on psychology dig when I'm talking about how do you humiliate an absolute narcissist. Mm. Um, so, so check that stuff out and know that this is ongoing work. That is we, I, I'm not claiming to have the answers. I'm a specialist. I'm not an expert. It's yeah. really hard. There's nothing harder than humbly humbling people who will say or do anything to keep from being humbled Ooh, i think i'm gonna make that your quote for this that yeah. say that again one more time dr jeremy i like there's that. nothing harder or more important to our survival than figuring out how to humbly humble people who will say or do anything to keep from being humbled wow oh. Everybody, listen, all of the links that he mentioned will be shared directly below. Thank you so much, Dr. Sh Jeremy Sherman, for joining us here today. We appreciate you being crazy like the rest of us. And everybody out there, whether you are listening or watching, I'm Naja Hall. I know I'm crazy with Naja Hall. Thank you for the love. Thank you, to the, thank you for the support. And I will see you Tuesday after next. I know I'm crazy with Naja Hall. I know I'm crazy. I know I'm crazy I know I know I'm crazy I know I'm crazy Naja Hall